Every morning before work, I fill two water bottles. The water emanates from fixtures in my home or at work. In a lot of ways, it connects me more deeply to this area than even hiking or paddling here. Okay, safety first. Safety first. On that day, I joined some folks from Tall Timbers for an eco-adventure in three parts. Lake Iomonia, and then we're going to have the clap fish to do some hiking through the Water Management District property, and then we're going to wrap it up with the State Park Lake Supping. These locations are tied together by that water in my bottle. Water that may have passed through this lake. Well, we're going to the Lake Ammonia sinkhole. And underneath us is uh, about six openings in the limestone that directly link to the upper Florida aquifer. The Florida aquifer runs from South Carolina to South Florida. Billions of gallons of water are withdrawn from it daily. All of our uh, large lakes are called dissolution lakes, that the underlying limestone has dissolved over uh, centuries, millennia, and then that causes a depression where the water collects rainfall when it rains a lot. So the lake sinkholes and karst systems do contribute directly into the Florida aquifer. You can go just areas just north of uh, around Tallahassee. Uh, there are a lot of sinkholes where that water is just flushing right down into that aquifer. So whatever happens surrounding some of those flush points, you know, is going to affect the water quality or drinking water. Lake Iomonia empties about every seven years, a process that helps clear muck from the bottom of the lake and keeps it clear for fish. People didn't always see the benefit of an empty lake, though. Because they saw the sinkhole, they saw water going down into the ground. In some places, fish were flopping on the sand. So with mules and ox carts, they built up this dam, rather hastily, I would imagine, and um, it kept the lake full. The dam has since been breached. I've been watching this lake go through its drought cycles, and it's healing because these, this dam has failed. The gates have been removed. Now the lake empties and is filled again by rain and by the Oclockney River when it floods. A study released by the Tall Timbers Research Station valued ecosystem services provided by the Red Hills region. The top two services cited were water supply protection and groundwater recharge, at an estimated value of $844 million. According to Tall Timbers, this is a benefit of having so much forested land in our region. You've got this wonderful, huge area of national forest, national wildlife refuge, and, and public uh, land south of town. But also north, further north, between Tallahassee and Thomasville, there's an, a, what amounts to a small national forest in terms of these large properties that are owned by uh, people who are primarily interested in sports hunting. This is the Red Hills. The distinctive area that has very rich soils compared to other areas in Florida, and uh, it has distinctive communities associated with it too. There's a shortleaf pine, uh, hickory community here, and also some of the beach magnolia forests we were walking through today are very enriched, uh, a little bit to have higher diversity than they do elsewhere in the state. The drainage is down here. We just walked along the side of kind of a, an old, I wouldn't call it a ravine, but a forested uh, valley with some drainage down through it. And there's some seepage that goes on here, but mainly it's just runoff from rainfall. Everything flowing out of the park flows eventually to Lake Jackson. It actually cleans the water as it passes through these areas and uh, also doesn't contribute to any contamination along through here. And uh, that goes to Lake Jackson, and Lake Jackson does feed the aquifer. Mm -hmm. Clap Phipps Park is also a haven for plant and animal life. Trillium, one of the earliest blooming plants in our area, they actually uh, will pop out uh, a little bit after Christmas. And uh, uh, these have already, you can see they've set the seed, it comes out a little purplish flower. We didn't get many birds to come down from the canopy to pose for our camera. But then, on our next stop, we saw great horned owl fledglings right in the parking lot. Yeah. Yeah. That's the little camera. Here we also met up with my own fledgling. That's a little camera. It's a little camera. There's more to the Alfred B. McClay Garden State Park than the famous gardens. But now as we get more into late spring and summer, the water sports really become our prime feature here at the park. Uh, a lot of people visit for swimming, kayaking, canoeing, fishing, and sailboating, and paddleboard sports. Georgia taught me how to stand up paddleboard. I stood up eventually. 
Unlike the other lakes we touched upon that day, Lake Hall doesn't have a sinkhole. Sometimes the aquifer feeds lakes instead of helping to drain them. It's considered one of the more pristine lakes in Leon County. Um, we have measured depths of 30 to 40 feet in places, and while there has not been identified a spring boil, we do believe that it's seepage spring fed. Just great opportunities here around Tazi. You know, biologists who live here, I just think it's the most wonderful spot in, uh, in, in the world sometimes just because of the great public lands again south of town and all these great private lands north of town. We're really in a very uh, important area. For more information on the Tall Timbers Red Hills Initiative, visit talltimbers.org. And for more information on the places featured in the video, visit the WFSU Ecology blog. For WFSU, I'm Rob Diaz, De Villegas.